central Indonesia is a wild volcanic world. Trapped in the heart of the monsoon, rains have created a paradise. Marooned on these tropical islands, life thrives. But not all is as it seems in this land of dragons. In Indonesia, there is a mystical world. Unchanged for millions of years, it hides many secrets. A dry, barren land, few survive here. For centuries, ancient legends have told of monsters roaming the hills. We now know these stories to be true. dragon is a modern-day dinosaur at the peak of its powers. On the handful of islands it inhabits, space is at a premium, forcing the animals to live side by side. they seem to have an amazing tolerance for one another. But it is unwise to underestimate the danger on your doorstep. Despite its wounds, the attack appears to have failed. But the dragon knows something the deer doesn't. He's dying. Recently been discovered, that Komodo dragons have incredibly potent venom. But unlike other reptiles, their methods of administering it are more brutal. The poison seeps into large wounds inflicted during the attack. Before it eventually dies. More and more dragons are drawn in from across the island. Sensing the inevitable. This hunting technique has been perfected over millions of years and has been key to the animal's success. Dragons have voracious appetites. And they tear into their meal. The three meter long monster. 
monsters can devour almost their entire body weight in one sitting. As the only predators on the Komodo archipelago, they have a vital role to play. efficient at pruning out the weak, they have the ability to control the populations of other animals and maintain a balance within this ancient ecosystem. The volcanic islands of Komodo lie on Indonesia's border with the Indian Ocean. Along with ancient fragments of the Asian and Australasian plates, they make up one of the most biologically important regions in the world. Known as Wallacea, the islands are home to an unbelievable diversity of life. their very own collection of dragons. The Western world did not learn of the importance of these unique isles until the middle of the 19th century, when it was documented by the English explorer and naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace, after whom the region is named. During his travels, Wallace was struck by the strange mix of creatures inhabiting the islands. They teemed with species unknown to science and unseen anywhere else. To the east lay the lands of Australasia and their bizarre creatures. Kangaroos, and birds of paradise. Whilst to the west, the animals had evolved to roam the vast forests and plains of Asia. Those living there were left to thrive. Many of the islands are young and were created less than two million years ago. Formed by a chain of volcanoes, they emerged from beneath the ocean. Volcanic islands had rich, fertile soil. All they needed was life, which the sea provided. Plants were the first to arrive as strong ocean currents carried fruits and seeds. Incredibly water-resistant, many were able to survive years at sea. Giving them plenty of time to find land. Once ashore, 
Vegetation spread quickly. Finally, animals arrived. Cast away on rafts, life forms of many different shapes and sizes made the crossing. The Virgin Islands had space for them all. These early inhabitants had the run of the forest and the pick of its bounties. But to make the most of them, the newcomers had to adapt. Today, their descendants plunder northern Sulawesi's volcanic beaches. monkeys are on the move. A troop of crested black macaques has come down to forage. Living in extraordinary large families, they like to do everything together. Each morning, they head to the shore to see what the tides brought in. Some seem more interested than others. salty drink. The water settles their stomachs, but not their nerves. Living in these fertile lands has allowed the monkeys to thrive in large, happy families. Supported by an abundance of food, troops can contain up to a hundred individuals. And one of the key ingredients for their lavish surroundings blows in on the wind. For most of the year, Sulawesi is swamped in cloud. Caught in the epicenter of the world's greatest weather system, the monsoon. Powerful winds batter the islands. Bombarded not once but twice a year, there is a reward for weathering the storm. Life-giving waters feed the land and all that grows on it. Providing Wallacea with the foundations for unrivaled treasures. Sulawesi is drenched by the monsoon for 10 months of the year. So when there is a break in the weather, there is no time to waste for one of its most iconic residents. A male Malayo has arrived at the beach for a very important event. He is preparing a nest. With the hard work done, he is joined by his partner. 
Taking advantage of the heat generated by the island's volcanic foundations, the pair will bury their egg deep in the sand. The chick will not be nurtured by its parents, but by the island that will become its home. It is thought that Malayos have temperature sensors in their bills to gauge the appropriate depth to lay their eggs. Nesting in communal areas, prime spots need defending. When their chick hatches, it could take up to two days to dig its way to the surface, where it will emerge to face the world alone. And there are many dangers prowling these beaches. With nothing seemingly on offer, the monitor lizard carries on down the beach. This dragon may not compare to the giants living on Komodo, but at over 25 kilos, the water monitor is the second largest lizard in the world. The prosperous beaches of Sulawesi provide the perfect home for these giant reptiles. Like their cousins in the south, they are one of the island's top predators. And they aren't fussy about what they eat. Its forked tongue flickers. tide has exposed a feast as crabs leave their burrows to forage. With such a varied diet, the monitor lizard controls the populations of many animals on the island. Another small factor that helps ensure Sulawesi's unique ecosystems remain in balance. When there are predators around, sometimes staying out of sight is the best way to stay alive. Lying still, this Draco lizard all but disappears. But today, he wants to be noticed. He's looking for a mate. His bright yellow dewlap advertises his presence to females. But he has attracted the wrong kind of attention. The vine snake's horizontal pupils give it acute binocular vision, so it can focus sharply on prey and judge distance with pinpoint accuracy. seems to be taunting its target, advertising its ability to swallow prey whole. But the Draco has the trump card. Like all true dragons, it can fly.
Back in the north, the crested black macaque family are on the move. Led by the alpha male, they are on a mission for food. He sends the adolescents to scout the canopy, while the rest wait on the forest floor. Once they find what they're looking for, they send it down via the most direct route. In these food-rich forests, the monkeys have access to over a hundred varieties of fruit. Mangoes, figs and breadfruit all grow in abundance. Some are easier to open than others. Even fallen trees provide opportunities. Termites are a protein-packed ready meal. The monkeys are not the only ones making the most of the fruit. A male hornbill is on a very different sort of mission. His partner has locked herself away inside a fig tree to rear their chick. He has the responsibility of making sure they both have enough to eat. below, he is much more selective about what he feeds his family. He picks the ripest figs from a handful of trees in the forest. And only the best will do. Returning to the nest up to eight times a day, the hornbill has his work cut out. And he has several more weeks of hard work before his chick is ready to take to the wing. Whilst both the hornbill and macaques make the most of the abundance of fruit on offer, they also give back to the forest that supports them. Roaming over great distances, they spread seeds far and wide. Ensuring continued growth. Whilst the hornbill continues his labor of love in the canopy, on the forest floor, the alpha male has decided the troop have had enough food for one morning. It's time to rest. Because they have so much food on offer, there is no need to fight over it. For this family, life is easy. Grooming reinforces bonds as well as getting rid of unwanted guests. The monkey's characteristic crests are highly individual and help the family recognize one another. Socializing is an important part of their day and vital to the troop's success. But when the alpha decides it's time to go, 
everyone follows. Sulawesi's fruit trees provide life for a wealth of animals. Strangler finks are among the largest. But their residents don't show their faces. Nothing is ever as it seems in the land of dragons. Another hunter is on the move. This one has the tail of a serpent. The armor of a dragon. And the feet of a lizard. But this is no reptile. This is the pangolin, a mammal on the hunt for insects. Poor vision means the pangolin has to rely on a strong sense of smell to track down its prey. An excellent climber, his nose leads him into the canopy. The pangolin's tail grips branches as his feet and claws propel him higher. He's hit the jackpot. An ant's nest. The ants stand little chance of escape against his sticky 40 centimeter long tongue. The ants are swallowed whole. Pangolins have no teeth, so they are unable to chew their food. Instead, their thick muscular stomach walls are lined with spines that help crush their meal. Attacking the intruder's head is a waste of time. His tough armor-plated skin can't be penetrated. Nostrils and ears can be closed and thick lids protect his eyes. Pangolins can consume up to 200,000 ants a night. Fortunately for their victims, each raid lasts no more than a minute or two. Nocturnal hunters have adapted incredible methods for making the most of the forest's riches. But there are those who use the darkness for a very different reason. Instead of hiding in the shadows, their intention is to be seen, 
fireflies transform the forest. Each of these tiny lights is a message beamed into the night sky. Gathering together in their thousands, males twinkle in synchrony. They are trying to attract a mate. Fireflies are actually tiny beetles, each individual just a few millimeters long. Picking the best spot for a performance is essential. Light is produced in their abdomens, the result of a reaction between oxygen and a chemical called luciferin. By concentrating their efforts, the beetles ensure females are all drawn to the same place, giving them a greater chance of success. A single light in the darkness would be easy to miss. But a treeful is hard for a female firefly to resist. Across Wallacea, unique animals have adapted to make the most of their bountiful surroundings. But one has truly mastered its environment. The Komodo dragon is the ultimate island predator. Originating from Australia over four million years ago, it is thought they swam to the islands they now call home. Arriving in a land of plenty, they quickly dominated. intelligent, they honed their hunting techniques. Today, over 5,000 currently roam four tiny islands in the Indonesian archipelago. This dinosaur is just one part of a unique Eden. Throughout the islands of Wallacea, the rare and extraordinary are flourishing. Thriving on their riches, all play a part in maintaining the balance of one of the world's most remarkable ecosystems. Central Indonesia is a Garden of Eden. The combination of monsoon rains and nutritious volcanic ash has driven the evolution of rich and bountiful life. Cut off from east and west, Wallacea is an extraordinary island paradise. Home to a unique mix of creatures 